Warning, 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 warning. Political ideas and opinions are coming up. Please refrain from acting apeshit over a topic that is still taboo to this day, even though nobody knows how to talk about it clearly without a logical point or reasoning. But hey, if it makes you feel any better, I hate the KKK too. Can we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? It's the 1970s, aka a very young civil rights America. We've got Ron Stallworth, who was the very first black police officer in the Colorado Springs Police Department. At first, he's not very respected at his job until he puts on his white voice and uses it to become a Klan's member. So with the help of Kylo Ren and Donnie from The Big Lebowski, their plan is to find out what the Klansmen are up to and take them down for good. <sighs> Be strong, man. I won't let them hurt you. This movie pissed me off. Not because I'm racist at all, and I'm not racist, thank you very much, I even though we live in a very white state. I'm just not a fan of Spike Lee at all. I've only ever seen one Spike Lee movie. I really, really don't like Spike Lee. To me, he is a very over-the-top Captain Obvious who, per me personally, uh, thinks that he's more subtle than he actually is. To me, he paints very obvious scenarios and very obvious char characters to go with very obvious storylines. And did, did I mention that I think he's incredibly obvious? And also personally to me, he feels like a filmmaker who wants to seem like he's morally gray, but is very obviously black and white, which, which is ironic because he does cover black and white social issues. But again, not to the light that I that I would deem like as either approachable or even relatable. Well, obviously it's not relatable for me because I'm not black. There's that's a very real fact that I'm not gonna get over. Right. So I'm pretty sure anyone any criticism towards this movie from us is immediately gonna be shot down by you don't get it because you're not black. But even then, I enjoyed this movie. Even if you did not, I thought it was pretty good. Certainly not one of my favorites of the year. Honestly, I thought Sorry to Bother You was a much better movie. Oh, which... Sorry to Bother You was a, was a goddamn theme park ride compared to this for me. You might say it's a kind of an odd comparison, but honestly, there are a lot of similarities to it. There's for... si there's similarities, again, you, for you, better or worse. You think you thought I was joking when I said he put on his white voice. He really does. When he uh, when he calls to become a, or to be an informant for the KKK, essentially, he fakes a white voice. No ADR required this time. Because Denzel Washington's son is actually talented enough for this. Whereas uh, the in Sorry to Bother You, you also have a lot of socio-political commentary. This one, all socio-political commentary. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. S signs, symbolism, everything. Which, to be fair, it's the 70s. So you can't fault that to the movie as much because, well, I mean, this stuff was everywhere. Including the Vietnam War. Everybody was protesting. Like, people had... That was supposedly when people were finding their voice. A lot of activism, both from the black community and, well, I guess... The we, hippie movement was still... Well, okay, it was the dying end of the hippie movement. Mm -hmm. The reason the social politics work in this movie is because it actually gives you a message that's not said very often, nor is it even agreed upon, and that's the idea that extremism is bad, regardless of where it's coming from. You may say no shit to that, but honestly... That That is a very prominent part of our culture nowadays. You are either with us or you are against us for ev every single time. And yeah, fuck anyone who goes with that. Jesus goddamn Christ. What? Yeah, that's me. That's my entirety of my feelings towards this movie. Yes, it does show the pit of extremism versus extremism, but I personally just hate extremism in general. Well, I, that, I do too. I mean, us being more level-headed, you know, in practice, that usually just gets two sides hating us instead of one. Yes, but it still doesn't go without say, without stating how come there we didn't see more of the level-headed people like we did get with Stallworth, which, by the way, he, I loved him. I loved uh, Ron Stallworth in this movie, his character, his actor behind him as well. Uh, but I also loved Adam Driver in it because he's, well, 
I personally just called them the dynamic duo and didn't want to go so far as to call them the next Riggs and Murtaugh from <laughs> Lethal Weapon. Well, that's also a different time period. I mean, they are great leads. Do you, you really like them, and there's something just very cathartic about seeing these guys take down the KKK, or they at least also, part and, of it. And with Driver also having the character trait of being Jewish, uh, that also does bring into play that they both have something worth fighting for. Uh, there is also a catharsis with even the two level-headed people still having an imbalance within themselves of one still just staying quiet and trying to keep society out of normal, while one is supposedly trying to fix the problem by being active in it and still trying to actually believe in what they believe is right while being level-headed in a crazy world. That itself was a very would be a very good scenario and a great setup as is but for me there wasn't enough focus on that it was still just going back to and with the extremism that everyone has experienced and at least to our age we've at least known what or at least heard on media through uh even through daily life and what what people would generally say to everybody else even on the internet all the goddamn mean-spirited shit that's said on there the extremism nature was not surprising in the slightest just calling people by their derogatory names was not like shocking at all in the least and by the time by the num umph time that they have to say the n-word which by the way fuck you spike lee for being a goddamn hypocrite and not seeing django unchained when you damn well said the n-word enough times in this to match that don't, it doesn't matter what the goddamn subject material mm. difference is. I wouldn't I wouldn't quite say it was as many times as that, if only because Django and Shane was a much longer movie. But but still, the way it approaches extremism though is that you have a lot of these black activists fighting for their liberation, which again was a very big part of the 70s, along with the KKK members who, as we know, are white supremacists who, you know, I think it's fair to say anyone who identifies with them is an inhumane piece of shit. But, Pretty much. But even though black people are no, by no means an equivalent of the KKK, I don't, I, at least I don't believe they have an equivalent of their own. I, I, assuming that. I, I, haven't done, I haven't done my research. But still, the way that... One on one part they'll be shout they'll be chanting black power, black power, and then they'll just cut over to the KKK that's shouting white power, white power. It's, it's See, they're similar, yet different. Bull fucking shit. Well, it's just it's it's a way of saying that's like this is the this is a bad mindset to have. Because there's other parts of this movie too where black people are like, uh, you know, all cops are bad because one cop is it's like all it takes is one bad cop to ruin everything. That's a, that's really stupid to think like that. But then of course the KKK go on and on about how black people and Jews and such is is destroying the country. But you see, you you see the the the, the parallels. You see they're yes they're similar but different. But it all kind of goes back to hate begets hate. Yes, I understand hate begets hate, but then that just leads to a predictability of a movie where nobody where nobody changes and where nobody changes and no resolution is to no resolution is still found and that just leads to a non a non-effective like not essentially non-ending. There's no closure of yeah, this this happened by but that's a but that's about as happy of an ending as you're ever gonna get. What do you think? Racism is just gonna suddenly die in America? No, but at least no. I, racism will never end because there will always just there will always be contrasting ideas, and there will also be contrasting ideas from crazy people to crazy people and illogical people to illogical people. One thing that that could have been done is that there could have been. Uh, backstories, it, there could have been explained backstories, which there were explained backstories for the well, for the black people, but there were never any explained backstories for and I'm not standing up for anybody for the KKK never, fuck them the main, the main thing that breeds hate, and this is something that's pointed out perfectly in one of my favorite race related movies ever, which oh, god damn it, ironically, is American History X, the 
goddamn point that they hammered home, which was fucking perfect, and it was at the end of the movie, which was a poignant point, it's how you're raised. It's how you're raised and the uh, environment that you live in, which then you spread to the outside world, and that's where the hate breeds from. It doesn't necessarily go down to the ideals, it is also go it also goes down to the people who are around you. It and there and there is also logic there's su supposed logic within the environment that you're given it and what you're told to do with with the lot with the values and logic that is be that is within that scenario but it is but no but it's still just uh, analyzing the idea or the object of it which that's already been done before. I would have liked something just at least a little bit different. But the only diff okay, we did get different, but again, that was only with two people. For me, it was only with two people and maybe, 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 maybe the sergeant, uh, again, the other white guy, because Steve Buscemi was in it. Yeah, it was cool to have him. He might have said like a one-liner or two, but he's barely a factor in it. And also, well, should we get to spoilers? Sure. The one part that I can absolutely agree that I personally as well kind of hated about this movie is that at times where you feel like it's just pandering, pandering to its audience of uh, activist black people. I mean, there's one part where they, they try to draw a parallel between the KKK and Donald Trump in the 70s. Really? They're talking about how, well, nobody wants to be called a bigot anymore. What we need to do is we need to push this stuff into politics. We need to find somebody who has these ideals with us and then eventually he'll be put in office. And Stalworth is like, well, oh, no. That'll never happen. No one will ever get to- Never, ever, 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 ever. Irony change subtle and also the words they choose are so carefully picked to invoke you know similarities of nowadays where he's talking to uh the duke guy the the the, the president of the kkk and he's like toe for grace fucking eric foreman from the seven that 70s show he says you know we're trying to restore america to its uh, what's it Greatness, I'm like oh, he said it. And there's other things too, where white privilege and black experience, just really. I mean, again, I get it. It's the 70s. We, they, they. This kind of stuff happened all the time. But trying to for ham fist this modern day bullshit into it, like, that's where it feels panderous to me. And in relation to the very end of this movie. They straight up use real world footage of, uh, what was it? The, 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 Char the Charles, Charlottesville, Charlottesville. Okay. It's that kind of stuff that just feels so forced. I mean, yes, it's, it's racism, it's hate groups and all that stuff, but trying to, again, trying to push it into, uh, oh, and, oh, and they show, Donald Trump with his with his bit of not everyone there was was white supremacists and neo Nazis. I can assure you, some of them were Confederate flags and Nazi and swastikas. It, you know, I, again, you had you had something good going if you were if you were more broad, if you were more deliberate and like you know kept this in the seventies. I could be, I could say yes, I'm all I'm all for that. But again, trying to bring in all this topical shit, one, it heavily dates this movie, and two, it just again, it just seems like panderous bullshit. <sighs> Sociopolitics. You, in movies, is you're you're playing with fire here. You can, you can you can it can work or you gonna it just ruins the whole thing. It didn't. It may honestly it didn't ruin the whole thing for me, but it just feels so out of place for what everything else you did that that was good. Like it, it was good. That I just don't like that part. That's that was that's my biggest complaint really. <laughs> Every, that, everything else I thought was good, whereas you may think that it doesn't do a very good job of, of, of like pushing a morally gray area. I think it does. I think it, it 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 shows this idea that just because it's a topic you agree with doesn't mean that 
the other side is completely 100% wrong. I mean, well, in this in this case, it is. God, I, I just keep contradicting myself. Yes, the KKK is bad, but trying to you shouldn't you shouldn't go down to their level you shouldn't have this mindset of they're all yes these all these white people are bad because that's what they think they think all black people are bad anyone who's not white is bad you shouldn't shouldn't think that we should be pushing more towards this idea that we we're not thinking just for ourselves anymore we're thinking about everyone that it's not just white people and black people it's people. The only time they get that in this fucking movie is when they change one word to their chant. And it's all power to all the people. That's fine. I'm down with that. But then you still go on later for people chanting black power. <clears throat> His, his girlfriend in particular, just like in Sorry to Bother You, is also a heavy activist. She dumps him after she finds out he's a cop because she said it'd be like sleeping, sleeping with, with the, the enemy. enemy. Which, really? You, this guy has been hanging out around you. He's been giving you stuff. He gave you, well, he gave you a comb, soul sister. But you still feel the need to turn him down because he even said he is trying to help? But because you associate with cops, and like she said, all it takes is one bad cop. By that logic, all it takes is one bad black person, and it's okay to hate black people, all of them. It's, it's yeah. again, maybe that was the point of the movie. Maybe that the point was to say that mindset is stupid. Extremism is bad. And that's fine. I like that. You may not, but I do. In that regard, I can recommend this movie. I, I mean, I can't say it's going to be, it's not going to end up on my top five best of the year, but it's worth, it's worth checking out. If you keep an open mind and you, tr and you truly pay attention to what's, what's actually happening, you'll probably walk away at least with a, with a reasonable, fun, interesting experience. The reason I don't hate this as much, okay, I also, I also just did not. I just didn't have a good time watching this movie. Technically, it's a well-made movie. And even though I said Spike Lee is an over-the-top Captain Obvious, he has style. He is able to direct. He is able to shoot a movie well. And even the some of the direction choices visually were actually very impressive, particularly with a scene where Washington, well, Stallworth, and his girlfriend are just walking on a bridge talking about black exploitation movies, which I actually saw as pretty entertaining coming from a film buff myself, and talking about Shaft, um, what was he comparing him to? Not Black Dynamite, uh, what was, it was like the picture of a pimp or something. I, I actually didn't didn't remember the names of the movies they're talking about. Ah, eh, whatever. No, um, he is able to show a movie in good style, and he does actually pay good homage to the time period. There's good music behind it as well. But again, he thinks that he's being this subtle genius when he's telling you what to feel. And again, I don't like I. Don't dislike this as much as I dislike Do the Right Thing, which that's one of the top 10 movies that I hate but everyone else loves. But f because of this movie actually having a good lead and a actual fun lead too and an entertaining one as opposed to Do the Right Thing where the only likable character was the supposed villain. That's why I like this a little bit better than that one. But again, I don't like this movie. I just didn't like when when it wasn't like trying to be unpleasant when really it was just being boring and there was no shock value in it because a lot of this stuff has been shown to gratuity and excruciatingness times before and uh, yeah again from two aside from two lead characters that i actually enjoyed <laughs> none of this worked for me and fuck you i am not a fucking racist I love I love all races, no bias against anybody. Just just let people be people. Hey, would it make you feel better if we grabbed a few baseball bats and beat the shit out of some neo Nazis? And eh, why not? I need to work out anyway. Bear you time, bitches. Bear you fucking time. Let's do this. We'll see ya. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we